know, maybe after Afterwards, let's get started. So, second uh, talk of the day, on the advantage of a full-grown product. Okay, so, um, first it's really a, a great, great pleasure to be able to give a talk here. And, uh, I'll, I, I divided the talk in three parts. Uh, in the first part, I'll introduce the uh, uh, next reading order for the production in the CGC framework, I'll explain the formula briefly. Uh, and then in the second part, I, I'll, I'll make an application to improve the photon production. <laughs> 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 uh, in in PDC. And well, also I have some preliminary results that I want to share with you in, in, in PA as well. And finally, in the third part, uh, I'll talk about uh, 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 photon jet correlations in the Arduino photon. So, so, okay, this, this is all clear. I guess we want to explore the, the smallest part of the TCP phase space diagram and CGC physics. And one way to do this is uh, to use the uh, so called that, that dense collision, which can be a central PA collision so that the big nuclei enhances the, the saturation effects. And, the, the formalism that I will be using is that of a diode dense collision. That's the, that's, that's the par paradigm that uh, underlines uh, the calculations that I will present. On the other hand, uh, you can also look at forward PP so that the uh, target proton is, uh, is probably at small <coughs> as well. And uh, our motivation is to, um, to use photons as probes uh, for CGC because photons are key. Uh, so not only photons, but also photons in correlations with, uh, with other particles, such as jets and radios. Now, now let's immediately go into the diagrams that uh, 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 take, take place in CGC. So at the leading order, uh, you, you have this quark uh, uh, Bernstein diagram. So here the, the projectile and the target move on their light cones and then, then you, you pull out the quark from the, uh, from the projectile. Then the quark iconally scatters on the target and you, you can produce a photon in the final state. Of course, besides this diagram, there is also a diagram where uh, you switch the interaction vertices between the photon and, 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 the, and, the, and, the, uh, and the nuclei so that the photon gets produced here. So both of these diagrams should be taken into account, of course. Uh, anyway, that's the leading order contribution. Then the, the next leading order contribution, uh, that's, that's now just one example of it. So you can think that instead of a, a quark, you, you, you pull out the one uh, uh, from, from the projectile. And then, of course, to, to get photons, you, you need quarks. So you first pair produce quarks, and then these quarks radiate uh, a photon. And uh, of course, in, in that process, the quarks can, uh, and, and they will sc scatter on the, on the nuclear target as well. Of course, the, here there are also more diagrams and I, I'll explain them in the upcoming slides. But I guess the important point is that we somehow want to focus on the mid rapidity region of, uh, of PA and PP collisions. And that's what, where we expect that this diagram should be the most important because it's, it's really a gluon driven process. Uh, both the projectile and the, and the target are described uh, just like gluons and we expect that to dominate the mid rapidity of high energy. So, in the rest of my talk, I'll, I'll, I'll actually just focus, uh, so together with the leading order diagram, I'll just focus on this uh, next leading order diagrams and all the computations I will, for all the computations I will use uh, these two channels. So why does it dominate your physicist want to be dilute? Uh, right, but uh, the projectile is dilute, but the, the, the point is that at, at high energy gluons still dominate. Uh, so if you have a high energy collision, X is small even in the projectile. And, 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 the, and then the, the quark content, uh, uh, so, sorry, the parton content of the projectile is, is still dominated by gluons rather than quarks. It doesn't let fall rapidly, it puts accent rapidly, right? That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. That's why it is. You still need to put both together and see if. So yeah, that's, that's, that's right. That's, that's, what, <coughs> that, that, that's, that's exactly what I'll show as well. So what, what, what do you measure here? You measure only the photon kind of stuff? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I'll show two applications. Clear, right? <coughs> well, yeah. 
So anyway, uh, I, I still want to continue a bit with these diagrams. Uh, so of course, there's another diagram where you can uh, uh, radiate gluons as well from the from the quarks. That's a very deep correction to the leading order diagram. And of course, in this case as well, uh, this is not just the only diagram. So you you should also uh, 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 you can you should also attach back the gluon to the quark line, and then in the complex conjugate amplitude, take, take the leading order contribution. That the cross section should. Uh, should have the same power of alpha strong, so that virtual collection should be taken into account as well. And 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 this this process uh, it should be important in the forward region, but as I said, in the middle of region that we are interested in, we consider it as suppressed. Uh, somehow, this and the previous process should mix because you should have contribution with as deep lab evolution of the probe, right? I mean, in order to do that correctly, you need both of these. Just like in the single inclusive calculation, this is just like the single inclusive calculation of the general potential in CR1. Yeah. Except with just one pole. There, you have to have the, these two weeks in the deal. Yeah, I, 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 I understand what you're saying. And, mm, yeah, I, I guess that, that's correct. Um, you also want to get the gluon channel. For the big lab one, yeah, because you would go just for the Because that's a soft one, why doesn't it just cancel? Because it's not that soft. Yeah. If you, if, if, okay, if, 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 if the observ observable is just inclusive gamma production, you have to integrate over the whole phase space of the mm -hmm. one. I agree, but it, the gluon can only contribute there if it's modifying the kinematics of the quark. The momentum, yeah, yeah. and so that means that you're not going to have any evolution from that new one. You will have deep lab evolution of the work distribution. If it's before, it happens before. Uh, well, well it, 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 if, uh, you would have to go out evolution, but, but only for the, the C of the new one being the order of one. If it's a soft new one, it'll cancel. The, you know, right, yeah, right, right. That's not, yeah. That's not. But I guess what you, you, you've done the calculation, you've been done, right? You can see what the contributions are. You, the, this was something that was. Uh, yeah, you, you, in the second paper that we have written. You, you had that calculation. Yeah, we have both quarking shift and gluing shift, which is counted. But you're not integrating over anything, you're taking a budget plus proton production. Oh, well, okay. All right. so, okay. So, so, so you would have to integrate over the digest, right? right. 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 Um, anyway, so to, to finalize this uh, uh, discussion with the diagrams, you, you also have this diagram as well. This, this is a bit funny diagram uh, because uh, so here you produce just a photon in the final state. Uh, and it, it, it actually has a, a couple of interesting properties. Uh, the, the first point is that uh, the, uh, the typical momentum of the photon uh, uh, in this in this uh, particular channel should be of the order of QS. That's what that's what you would expect. So uh, the the PT distribution of the photons should somehow reflect the PT distributions of the gluons in the nuclei. That, that that's that's a nice property. Uh, there's another nice property is that it's it's actually zero at leading twist. So in, in other words, you need you need to pick up two gluons from the nuclei to have a non-zero contribution. So in, this has to be a box diagram at least to to, to give a finite answer. And it's it's a kind of a Fourier theorem argument that the triangle uh, uh, contribution goes to zero, where you just have one gluon from the proton and one gluon from the nuclei. So anyway, that's that's also a nice thing because it's sensitive to higher twist corrections. Um, but on the other hand, uh, if you want to look at uh, uh, phenomenology, then uh, in fact, so if, by comparing it, let's say to the uh, QQ bar gamma production, uh, this is a uh, actually suppressed and, and uh, roughly speaking it's just because you have a quark loop and one obvious reason is you have phase space suppression and another reason is that uh, you have flavor cancellations in the in, in the loops so because because you have to you have to sum up all the flavors in this case on the level of the amplitude so the the, the sign of the uh, of the charges of the individual flavor matters and then if you take the, the three lightest flavors, their masses are almost degenerate and they are, uh, roughly speaking, much smaller than QS and uh, therefore, just roughly speaking, their contribution should uh, just give a, a, a zero. So 
So anyway, uh, it's it's really a beautiful diagram, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I I I think phenomenologically, at, at least I, I couldn't find any any good uh, any, any good application. So I don't I don't consider it as well. And now let's go more into the details for the formulas that we are using. This is uh, now the formula for the leading order cross section, and uh, it it has been written down in in, in, in several <coughs> references. Uh, the uh, most important thing here is the Gluon distribution that contains uh, all the information on, on on saturation physics, and it's given here by the uh, by just by the fundamental dipole. Now going to the next leading order diagram, as I said, I will look only at the Gluon initiated channel, and here you have more diagrams. And this, this, the simple reason why there are more diagrams uh, is uh, because. Uh, now both the gluons and the quarks can uh, uh, scatter on the nuclei. Uh, so uh, not only that, but also you can have scattering just of one quark or, or both the quark and the anti-quark. And then uh, you can attach photons on all the possible uh, places in the quark propagators. And that's how you generate all these diagrams. And that's, that's what we in fact did uh, in all details and sum up the amplitude. Then I, I'm not, discuss the details of that, uh, rather just for show the full formula for the cross-section. This is the uh, full differential cross-section uh, for the gluon initiated channel. And here the, the gluon, uh, sorry, the, the pattern content of the projectile is described by the gluon uh, UGD. On the other hand, uh, to describe the target, in this case, it's not sufficient to have just one uh, gluon distribution. You need, you need uh, three in principle, different uh, gluon distributions, this one, this one, and this one. And then there are these hard factors, uh, uh, which when, when you calculate are much, much longer uh, expressions than you had at, at, at the leading borders. It's, it's really terrible when you see it, so I, I, don't, I don't show it. Uh, and uh, now, uh, for this uh, uh, description of the target, as I said, you have three different distributions, and the reason why uh, you have more than uh, one uh, uh, distribution, so this this would be the typical, uh, just just typical gluon distribution. But you have also this extra two, and the fact is that now also the, the the quarks interact with the target as well. And when the quarks interact with the target, you have this quadrupole type distribution, and you get the mixed term from taking uh, uh, the part of the amplitude where the gluon interacts with the target and the quark, anti-quark uh, interacts with the target in the complex conjugate amplitude and you get this term. Uh, these distributions were not, uh, are known. They are actually exactly the same distributions that you have in uh, QQR production, which is not uh, unexpected. So uh, just attaching the photon to the QQR production doesn't change these uh, the distributions. So, so they are known and, well, by looking at them, they are, they are fairly complicated, but there's a there's a limit in which they uh, very much simplify, and that's when you take that that's that happens when you take that the quark and the anti quark uh, have very large transverse momenta. In in that case, the the separation distance between the quark and the anti quark is uh, is very small. So roughly speaking, you can think of that quark and and the anti quark pair uh, as a gluon, and in in, in that case, uh, in fact, all these distributions collapse. Uh, to, the, to just one distribution, and, and you get this, uh, just uh, the, the usual gluon distribution. <coughs> so what I'm describing you now is basically the KP factorization limit uh, of this uh, more general formula that I also use in the, in the later slides. Uh, for, for this particular calculation, uh, we, we did all the possible uh, checks we, we could think of, uh, such as the photo word identity, and also we check the phot soft photon factorization. So when you remove this universal factor uh, that, that, that you get when you go to the soft photon limit, what remains is the amplitude for uh, QQR production. So we reproduce that. And also we did the calculation in two different gauges, the, uh, uh, the Lightcomb gauge and also the Lorentz gauge. And, and in fact, we found that the uh, results agree on the level of, on, of the amplitude uh, once you use the word identity. Uh, so that, that was also reassuring, and as I mentioned before, uh, by taking the appropriate limits, uh, we, we showed that uh, uh, we can recover the KT factorized and the PPCD results as well, so we are confident our results are correct. Can uh, the gauge choice by the photon? 
Uh, gloss, gloss, sorry. Yeah. Uh, now, um, going more towards the numerical calculations uh, uh, for the multi gluon correlators, uh, we, we use the, the standard large NC approximation, and in that case, these, uh, these functions uh, really simplify. So uh, instead of all, all that structure, you just get a, a, a product of dipoles in all cases, so they just become the same function. And that's, that's, that's essentially what we would use in numerics. So the, the, full, uh, uh, the full cross section now becomes like this. So this, 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 this is where the, uh, 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 this, this, this part describes the nuclei and all the other stuff I put in the heart factor. And uh, uh, so what's, what's left now to do is uh, this uh, numerical 10 dimensional integral for the full inclusive, inclusive cross section, and that's what we will do. And this is now the uh, leading order contribution. Uh, now, I, I sh there's one thing I, 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 I have to explain, and that, that's uh, kind of a, a, a power counting or, or how, how we do this calculation by including the leading order and the next leading order contribution. Uh, so you can think of uh, the next leading order contribution in some sense as a C-quark branch down. So mm, what I want to say is that uh, this next leading order contribution also includes C-quarks, but C-quarks are included also in this leading order contribution if you uh, if you take the distribution functions uh, for quarks that uh, take into account the C-quark component as well. Uh, so we we don't want that uh, and. Uh, the, the, roughly speaking, the reason why you, uh, why you have uh, uh, C-quarks uh, here as well is if you start from the fully differential cross-section and then imagine you are uh, integrating out the uh, phase space of the quark that's not emitting the photon and taking the appropriate co collinear limits, uh, then when you pick up the collinear singularity from that phase space integration, uh, that collinear singularity multiplied by the gluon distribution function by the Hilop equation should give the quark distribution function. And, and that, that's, why, that, that's why this contribution also has C quarks. So it, by including C quarks here as well, you, you, that, that's, that's clearly wrong. So you are, you are doing double counting in some sense. In some sense. So uh, a consistent calculation or one way to, to do it consistently is to replace the, uh, this. Uh, to replace this uh, distribution by a, by a distribution of valence quarks, so we don't want to include C quarks here as well. And that's, that's what, we, what we will do in the numerical calculation. But then, when you do the integral over the quark and quark phase space, you still have this collinear singularity which corresponds to the theta of loss, right? Right. Yeah. But, but you can re so this you do remove. Uh, so we have finite quark masses that that affect is just regulated by the quark mass. Yeah, that that effectively take, take, takes care of that. I, I guess. Still, you have mass. I mean, not there. Yeah. But you could remove that, right? You could remove it and still keep. You know, no. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you remove it and then you you keep the uh, C quarks inside your. Right, yeah, right, yeah. Make that's... sure that your calculate and a low calculation doesn't contain any uh, uh, collinear laws, which are some by the deep distribution. Yeah, but but I, I guess then then you have to somehow simplify this expression, right? Because because here the gluon has finite kt still. So in in order to really do that calculation, I think some approximation here is necessary, and also some of the diagrams. Uh, somehow it should be the same as the CXY calculation from the single inclusive where right. you remove the you remove and you remove a collinear along which is then absorbed into the deep evolution. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking about that, but somehow in the end we, we ended up with this scheme which Okay, but so but you don't remove consistent. this so you don't remove this log and it's just regulated by the program. Yeah, yeah. Which means that some other result from the analog contribution will, will have large logs of, I assume, a few, well, in some, basically the photon log or some logs of the photon momentum divided by the, by the light work mass. 
Right. But, but. Oh, but it's, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, but that's, I mean. I mean, let's say the C ports here are. Right, so, so, so I guess what Thomas is saying that this, this load should be one step of Ziegler resolution yeah. for the port distribution, right? So you should, right. it should be included. I don't know about balance, it doesn't have to be balance. It's a C port distribution. But, but I mean, doing one or doing the other calculation, it should be the same, right? So. Well. It's not the it's 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 not the same thing. Doing a, in one year doing a calculation, which is where you get the result that's explicitly proportional to a log of Q squared or fourth mass. In the other case, you're doing a calculation where these logs have been removed and absorbed into the lab evolved quantum distributions. It's not. I mean, it's not the same. But, but this, these co these logs don't cancel when they, so these are collinear singularities, are they? And when the photon is emitted off uh, the quark and the anti quark, they don't cancel? No, because it's collinear singularity associated to the mean. It, it's not a small, it, it, it's a collinear asso a singularity associated just to the integral or the quark and the anti quark. Right, but right. When, when the quark and the anti quark are exactly parallel, doesn't the photon, the photon still doesn't cancel between the emission of the quark and off the anti quark? But it's it's not not like it was a soft photon. It was a soft photon. Right, okay. Yeah. Soft, so, soft so you should see, the, you do see, I guess, that if it's a soft photon, you yeah, have these logs of mass. Yeah, I think, I think we, we, we checked that. Okay. okay. So it's sort of kind of like you can write the debug evolution yeah. in QED with the photons, mm -hmm. and couple of the quarks in QCD, right? You have a couple quark and photon evolution. Mm -hmm. That's sort of kind of showing up here. But now, isn't there a symmetry? So, you know, you have a, a so suppose you don't, you don't have um, a singular, uh, you don't have a soft photon. So you have two different asymmetric calculations, two different calculations which are asymmetric. One, the quark carries mostly momentum, one, the anti-quark carries mostly momentum. In fact, take the case where the, where the, where the photon carries more momentum than either the quark or the anti-quark. In well, one case, if the quark carries most of the momentum, the photon is emitted off the quark. If the anti quark carries most of the momentum, the photon is emitted off the uh, But you see, it's, I see it's, it's because of the amplitude and complex conjugate amplitude, the charge will come in the same way. Right. Yeah. So you yeah. do have the same thing. Square. Yeah. It's a minus sign square. Yeah. It's a minus sign square, right? <laughs> okay. No, no, good. Because. Well, it's What's curious the that there's a genuine mass singularity there. It's, it's curious that there's an infinity. In the mass of the quark, which is a little bit on, a little bit on but, but if you were not to put this valence index in the second line, then the singularity would be observed in the lab evolution of the quark distribution, yes. and that would avoid all these issues. I think that was Thomas's mm -hmm. thing. So it's, it wouldn't be double counts or anything, it would just be over counts. Yeah, I don't know. No, I don't think so. Because, because. Because still at the analog contribution from the so you, so there no, are no, no. but uh, but you see your analog valence whatever your valence uh, your your quark distribution right is deep lab evolved so it's no. not the no that you removed that's why you put valence there no but if you if you were not to put valence it would be deep lab evolved yes. C quark distribution so the slope we're discussing would have been there and you could have been honestly just subtracting it out of the first term. Right, so right. To the second right. That's the end. And that's you never see any such singularity, and you yeah. look happy. No, Whereas I, now you kind of. Is this what is? What he's doing is probably correct because to get the C quark, you only need to evolve one time the unit. Yes. But, but it's, not so so it's, it's, it's not only that it's the D lab evolution of the C quarks, the D lab evolution, it's also the D lab evolution of the muon distribution, mm -hmm. right? So somehow this large log is, is subtracted. This large large log is subtracted from the muon distribution and added into the C quark distribution. Yeah, yeah. And so, so this is a large uh, log from the GQ splitting function. Yeah, so it's a G to G to Q to oh, R. Huge, sorry, huge. It's a, but the G to the gluon is included. But yeah. so, no, but the contribution that here is it's a G to Q Q bar, right? No, it's but G to Q Q bar splitting but function. The log arises, no, the, 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 no, 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 that's a wave function. No, it's a splitting function. The quark of gluon. splitting function is quark out of a gluon. Yes. Sorry. Gluon, I mean, what kind of Yeah, yeah. Gluon, yeah, that's right. 
All right, so, so what he has is the new one does this, right, and then this thing in turn emits, I don't know how to do it properly. Yeah, yeah, so, the, so like, this like one. this, right, and then there is a photon that yeah, yeah, so, is so, yeah, so this is a contribution that, that generates quarks from the blue distribution. Yeah. That, so, in, in that sense, it contributes to the evolution of the C quark distribution, but it's also present in the virtual term, virtual part of the of the gluon evolution of the gluon distribution because it's something you're taking something away from the gluons and you're putting it into the quarks. Right? So I'm not sure how, how to this is um, I'm sure I buy it. The, so the D-lap evolution, this is just the gluon giving rise to a quark. And that's part of the quark D-lap evolution. That's part of the part of the quark D-lap evolution. It's not the but, but, quark but, yeah, but, yeah, but the, but the integral of this so but the integral of this splitting function over C goes into also into the virtual part of the evolution of the gluon distribution. Right? So what yes. you what you're saying you is that yes, but yeah, you're losing you a quark. So you can so it affects the evolution of both. You are talking about this? No, but that's that doesn't give you four, right? Then really you're gonna put the same thing and you're gonna put the four. This no, is what no. you're talking about. No? How so I mean this cannot look I mean so you treat PQG at the leading order and the virtual directions. Yeah, but PG, right. PGG, PGG of does have a virtual correction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. one of them. And PGG has a virtual correction. And one of the virtual parts of the virtual correction in PGG is an integral over the phase space of PG of PGQ. Yeah, about this is that correction. I just drew. But so what diagram are you worried about? So that that loop, presumably, if phi p means the gluon distribution, which is d to evolve, yeah. that, that's part of d distribution of phi p. And this would be part of the d uh, evolution, sorry, of phi p. And this would be part of d evolution of f, but if it wasn't balanced by the c quark pattern. Right. But somehow, what you're doing in deep lab evolution is that somehow you, you're looking at fork initiated and gluon initiated processes, then there are law, then, then you have logs which you reshuffle among them. So, so certainly the fact that the gluon can become a fork is decreases the number of gluons that you have, right? Deep lab. Yeah, that's fine. Look, I, I think in general we probably can agree that. Tiglap evolution mixes quarks, mixes quarks and gluons, yeah. uh, a flavor single quarks yes. and gluons, <laughs> and there are flavor non single quarks which you call valence, which do not mm -hmm. couple. That's fine. Right. So, but the worry I think, broadly speaking, is that if you limit yourself to non single quarks and gluons, your Tiglap evolution doesn't quite close, right? And that's why you start with the log. Right. Uh, which is trying to mix your gluons to flavor single. Core. If you fix the, work out if you fix the total transverse momentum, is the cutoff the total transverse momentum? So the photon, that picture that you drew there, if I fix the if I measure the photon and I measure its transverse momentum also, is there a mass singularity or just a, a singularity down at the transverse momentum of the photon? Uh, I didn't quite so suppose I measure the photon right. and I fix the photon's transverse momentum greater than the mass of the quark. I fix it, I measure it. Yeah. Is there still a singularity in the mass or is that sing is that singularity disappear? I was asking whether we have log of q squared over m squared or if you have a tt of the photon, you get the log of q squared over tt squared. So yeah. you don't have a q squared here because I would know I, there's no there's no virtual photon that would you Q squared. So somehow the logs has a, there's a log if there's a log of M has to be a log of M right. log of the rate of some momentum in scale over M. And if you're integrating over anything else, the only thing that's left is the KT of the yeah. So the hard scale is the KT of the So if the K squared is K T of the So that incoming that incoming gluon is 
uh, this is part of a Feynman diagram or it's part of a factorized expression? It's a Feynman diagram, so it certainly has a transversal of that also. Yeah, that, that's, so it depends true. On that's true. That's what? true. So here there's a, it's, it's an unnamed but it's a KT factorized. So yeah, scale. so it has that scale. So you have the, that, you have the transverse momentum of the initial gluon, of the final photon, mm -hmm. then you have a mass. Yeah. And so the question is, that, is that mass signal still there when the photon transverse momentum is fixed? Or is it uh, only because you integrate over the photon? But L, it's yeah. a log of what? There's no two squares, so it's log of KT anyway over something. There's three, there are three, three potential scales, the KT initially, yes. the mass of the quark, yes. and the so transverse so momentum of the photon. But yeah. so, so certainly this process... So I have the log, of which variables? So, 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 so it's the KT of the quark, you mean? So you say there's KT no, of the No, no, no. I said the KT of the original... You want KT, what do KT and the mass? Yeah. yeah. So but, three, but so certainly, one log and three variables. What's the log? So, so certainly, at least, I mean, you can go to the collinear limit. This process is, the kinematics is, kinematics is perfectly fine in the collinear limit of the incoming blue on KT is zero, right? Yeah. And at least in that limit, uh, then it just reduces the collinear process. And, it, and at least in that limit, the log should be a log of the photon KT over the mass. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so at least in the limit when the photon KT is large, and you can neglect the incoming and you neglect the incoming gluon KT, that should be their ratio. Maybe it gets more complicated when the photon when the gluon KT is large and the photon. photon well, KT is well if the photon KT is large, you might have a law with the photon KT or the gluon KT. Unless the gluon KT is smaller than the mass of the core. That's right, yeah, yeah, that's it. And, and then a miserable question. So if you do have this, this mass in the quark, what mass do you think this is? Is it 5 MeV or 300 MeV? Yeah, so it's, we use the current masses. 5 MeV? Yeah. Wow. If you're see, this is in a way very interesting. If you're proposing a, a way that maybe you're going to measure the, the, the current quark mass, that's you know potentially very interesting if it were right. So <laughs> you write it down. <laughs> yeah. Measure the current quark mass in the constant. <coughs> that was the conclusion. I, mean, I think I think he has a point. You know, to go to a C quark, you just need one step of evolution. No, but you can have C quark produced earlier on. That's not the only way to produce a C quark. The gluon splitting into QQ bar can happen like 10, yeah, 10, 10 evolutions. Right, right. For the, the gluon depends on the C quark, but from the factorization, if you look at collinear factorization here, you have a gluon that splits into QQ bar. That's or, enough to. Yeah, or you can have an. If you know the gluon, that's what it's like. If you know the gluon distribution, you know the C quark. Sorry, maybe, maybe I missed that, but in addition to this, so what I'm trying to say, in addition, so this is a sort of idea that your, your PDF gives you a gluon, right, and then you run with it. Or your PDF can give you a quark. And you just emit the photon from it, right? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? What I'm saying is that the Yoda diagram, if you do the uh, the calculation, the D lab, like positive diagram. This, the, the, right? Yeah. And, and so the right? That's what it is. It's, it's oblique. Yeah. Right? So it's 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 right? I mean, there's one vertex. One I'm vertex. saying that this is part of D lab evolution. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. What so I'm saying, to account for it, you have to include the term with that. No, what I'm, yeah, exactly. what I'm saying is that. To get the C quark, if you do the way he's doing it, I think it's correct. Because you have a balance, you get the C quark, if you separate the non singlet from the singlet, you get the C quark, right? What you, you should do is just, if you know the blue one, just one iteration gives you the C quark. That is not the one C quark. The problem is that one iteration gives you a large log, which you really should be resumming. Right. I mean, dig lab evolution, lab evolution can be like this, right? We are in your scenario. Where's yes, the yes. Where is this diagram? Okay, let, 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 let me put this. Let me right, so this, these are many steps of big lab evolution. <coughs> I didn't say that the GNU one does not depend on C1. I just said that if you solve big lab for GNU one, right, and you solve it, which contains C quark, right, one step of the evolution of the GNU one, right, gives okay. you the C quark. Oh, there might be more steps too. Yeah. Well, Yuri's saying maybe it's four or five steps. How do you know? Uh, what you just groups. said, you said you, uh, the C quark always comes from a gluon. Here is an example of a C quark coming from a C quark from a C quark from a C quark from a gluon. And what you're saying, that contribution is not there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> I, I must admit that this particular way of calculating that we, we are using makes me a bit un uneasy. Uh, You're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> as well, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't completely understand it. I, just, just on the, on the, on the rough level that I just described, and, um, I, I figure that on that rough level, it's, it's in some sense a, a consistent way of, of calculating it. I think we shouldn't include C quarks here, that because because these C quarks are 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 present here. At, uh, uh, so, so I, I'll just go on with this. Uh, uh, sure, you've got that choice. Right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so the dipoles are evolved according to the uh, running coupling BK, and we use the DMV model for the initial condition. Uh, DMV model gives a good description. Uh, so it is the parameters give a good description of JSR production, but of course you can. Uh, uh, Use other dipole models, and we intend to try that as, as well. And the last point before going to the numerics, we uh, we will consider isolated photons. Uh, so we use this isolation criteria in uh, uh, the azimuthal angle and the rapidity to be larger than some r. So this effectively, uh, uh, so by in the experiment, this uh, they they also uh, make a cut on the hadronic activity inside this core to be below some threshold. Uh, essentially, this suppresses collinear emissions such as fragmentation photons. Uh, and in, a, in our calculation, we use a simplistic approach in some sense, so we don't, we don't include this fragmentation component, so we uh, basically just uh, uh, cut out all the photons that are uh, inside of this cone, and the value for the cone radii is taken to be 0 0.4, which is the, uh, which is the LHC present. Now, uh, the uh, PP cross section was measured at uh, the LHC uh, for uh, uh, several collision energies, uh, 2.76, 7, and 13 TeV. And uh, 13 TeV, uh, uh, the lowest PP beam is, is quite hard, I think of, uh, about 100 GeV or so, so we, we didn't consider that. But uh, 2.76 and 7 uh, TeV starts at about 20 GeV uh, from Atlas and CMS. And, uh, that's of course uh, still too hard to see uh, some effect of uh, saturation directly, but uh, our message is somehow that even at uh, those couple of tens of GeV that we will explore, X is still small, so gluons should still dominate this uh, uh, this, uh, this this process, and that's that's essentially what uh, uh, we want to explore because, uh, as I said before, our uh, channel has. Um, well-defined uh, KT factor as limit, which should uh, uh, also work at uh, that moderate values of KT. So certainly we will not explore uh, directly saturation physics, but still it's, it's, it's I think, interesting uh, to uh, check uh, just uh, how our calculation uh, 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 compares with the data uh, before doing uh, uh, more interesting case such as PA. And now, now I show some systematics of the numerical calculation. So here, uh, uh, I, I plot the ratio of the uh, uh, full inclusive cross section uh, uh, coming from the KT factorized uh, uh, version of the cross section and the full CGC version of the cross section. Uh, this is the ratio as a function of uh, KT. Uh, the collision energy is fixed to 7 TeV, and the two plots are for two different rapidities. Uh, and we resolve uh, all the contributions for flavor. And there are two things. So uh, first of all, at uh, uh, low transverse momenta, the, um, uh, the KT factorization breaking uh, is about 10%. And it's more stronger for light flavors. And uh, it's more pronounced uh, when you have uh, 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 when, when you go forward in rapidity. So both of these things are somehow intuitive. Now, on the other hand, uh, if you go to the momenta, which are a couple of tens of GeV, uh, let's say 20 GeV or so, then the KT factorization breaking is basically negligible. And uh, that's what uh, uh, somehow justifies uh, that we use 
uh, the uh, KD factorization formula instead of the full CGC formula in our upcoming calculations, provided that the uh, photon transfer is about uh, uh, 10 or 20 GV or not. And that's what uh, we will indeed use. So instead of this full CGC formula, you get this uh, KD factorized formula where uh, the uh, uh, two fundamental dipoles are replaced by an adjoint dipole, and you also get two less uh, uh, integrals to do, so now you have an eight-dimensional integral to perform numerically, although, although we did both, obviously. Uh, and, okay, so now, now I show... Oh, sorry, could, could I ask about the transition? So how do you replace two fundamental dipoles? The S matrices replaces. Uh, if this were fundamental S matrices, you could replace according to my one joint, but the so hands, the relation is like... By change factorization, you mean you take the linear limit of the no, yeah, right. but also, yeah, that's what it means. You go to the BFK, or yeah, linearizing yeah. 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 everything. So, <laughs> so <laughs> the linear limit of one squared. So, is this in reality? I'm thinking about it. I think it's yes, magic. I think it's pretty big. So, the uh, and, and is the uh, yes, is it trace VB dagger? Yeah. Or it's trace VB dagger minus one? Trace VB dagger. So it's, it's a S. It's a S. It's not an S. Correct. And you're trying to So, okay. That, that, that's, that still works, right? I mean, for S, it works. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, correct. Yeah. You just threw everyone you, you, You're just complaining yeah. because in his book, he uses N for. Not just in the book. Not just in the book. And that n originated from somebody having n1, 2, and 3 in a dipole number. And the capital n was the sum of n1, n2, etc. So the problem is that I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so the n is the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyway, these are the formulas that I uh, use from now on. And uh, here I uh, uh, showed uh, some systematics of the calculation. So, uh, so you can ask the question, what, what is uh, the uh, contribution of the next leading order to the full cross-section? And uh, here we plot a fractional contribution uh, coming from the next leading order by changing the collision energy and the function of uh, KT. And uh, so this lowest uh, curve is for weak energies, 0.2 TeV. And you can see that the next leading order contribution is less than 20%. But then uh, going to the uh, we can, uh, sorry LHC energies already at 2.76 TV, it's uh, it goes up to more than uh, uh, more than 80 percent, and then of course increasing the energy more, and that's that's just even more pronounced. So uh, somehow this is our uh, main message that, that the LHC we really have a long driven process, and we should uh, we should consider that diagram is the most important one for the LHC. You did not include the part initiating photon production with three particles in the case. No. But that's also so, that's also part of so the hello, hello. hello. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. But have you have you numerically tried varying the core class? Yes, we did. I can I will show the results. Okay. Uh, I think actually uh, the band so the band that comes uh, here. But maybe that's not the best plot. Comes from also uh, varying the quark mass. Uh, the other part is uh, coming from the error of the Monte Carlo integration. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we tried to do that. Uh, so anyway, that's, that that was one systematics, and this is uh, systematics when we fix the collision energy and change the rapidity, and then at forward rapidities, uh, of course, the, the projectile gets uh, uh, more dilute, and then. Uh, and this valence quarks start to contribute, and the NLO contribution drops to about even 50%. So I, I expect if you go to the forward abilities, then, then, then you need to include the corrections to this uh, leading order contribution. But at least if you focus on mid rapidity range and maybe some smaller abilities, then it should be fine to use this dual initiated channel. That's, that's uh, what we are trying to promote here. Uh, Okay, now, now I come to comparisons with the experiment. Uh, this is CMS data at 2.76 uh, uh, TeV. And uh, so we've, uh, we, we found that uh, 
our curves can can get on top of the data provided we use a k-factor so we need a k-factor of 2.4 and the band here comes from uh, systematics such as uh, changing the quark mass uh, or varying the, the quark mass of the individual flavors and also from the from the Monte Carlo integration so that's that's the effect of the quark mass. Varying by how much? Uh, so I, th I think for the lightest quarks uh, we uh, change from uh, uh, 2 mV to 7 or 8 mV or something like that. So basically what I'm after is that have you numerically checked that is your, is your cross-sector proportion of the log of the quark mass? Uh, yeah. Uh, so can you, is, so we, does we it blow up if you try to make the quark mass less? Does it, does it, does uh, it blow up if you try to make the quark mass less? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, because we tried it, we tried it for more exclusive states. We used, we looked at uh, uh, kind of for Konya jet uh, correlations, and there, for in the soft photon limit, we, we, we checked that it has a it has a log that would yeah it, it, it does go like a lot of yeah 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 no, no I no, I recall that yeah 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 that's uh, because in the soft photon limit it it it, uh, it goes to the uh, Q to bar production times the that that factor and. The, the, the soft spot and free factor and the Q to bar production has that one limit. So. <clears throat> uh, this is a comparison at 7 TeV uh, for Atlas and CMS at uh, different rapidity beams. And by using the same uh, K factor, we find that uh, uh, we can describe uh, uh, this data as well. And then, then we made a prediction at, uh, at, at 13 TeV. Now going to PA. Uh, I, I show some preliminary results of RPA. I don't know what, what these lines mean. Okay. That, that's somehow, I, I, I didn't make these lines. Uh, but anyway, oh, there's also a rapidity here. Okay, ne never mind. So at, at 0 0.2 TeV, we make a plot of RPA as a function of uh, photon momenta. And uh, I apologize, the plots are still a bit. Uh, uh, because it's a preliminary <coughs> work. But uh, anyway, you can see that uh, 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 here at, uh, at the mid rapidity, uh, you have a, a corning like behavior, uh, which is a reflection of the fact that we are uh, close to the initial condition. Then, by going forward, this is uh, slightly washed out. And then, uh, proceeding further to uh, uh, the TV energies at the LHC. Uh, the, the, the current like behavior is, is uh, gone completely and you just get a strong suppression on RPA, which is uh, even more pronounced when you go forward. So the blue curve is at mid rapidity and the red curve is uh, uh, for forward rapidities. Uh, of course, these results are susceptible. So first of all, this result, this result is susceptible to the uh, uh, particular choice you take for the initial condition because it's, it, it just re uh, reflects the initial condition in some sense. So if you change the initial condition, the, the, this curve should change, and this result is uh, 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 dependent on, on how you do evolution, whether you use RCDK or, or, or something more uh, complicated than that. Uh, now, uh, I move on to uh, photon jet correlations. Uh, and uh, here we are looking at uh, uh, final states where the moment of the photon and the jet are uh, much, much larger than the saturation scale. And then we use this uh, linear uh, combinations of momenta, uh, capital Q and P tilde. Uh, and we look at uh, what's called the correlation limit or the near back-to-back -back limit, uh, where this uh, 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 capital Q is much, much smaller uh, than, uh, than P tilde. So we are basically interested in uh, near back-to-back -back kinematics. And to motivate this a bit more, uh, in a diode-diode collisions, uh, uh, where the uh, uh, KT, where the uh, transfer uh, KT from both the projectile and the target is small, at least to the leading order, you have back to back emissions. Then, when you uh, turn on a, uh, uh, some finite density in, in the target, you get a transfer kick from the CGC, and this brings in momentum and balance. So, somehow you are motivated to um, explore uh, near back to back uh, kinematics and see how it's uh, sensitive to separation. Uh, and what we will uh, be looking at uh, uh, more precisely are the angular correlations, but now in terms, uh, not in terms of the original 
uh, the variables of the uh, photon and the jet momenta, but in terms of this moment, momenta Q and the P tilde, and especially we want to calculate the angular harmonics related to uh, uh, these correlations. So now basically you take these cross sections and, and uh, which I just wrote before and you make an expansion uh, you, you make an expansion in terms of the Q or P tilde in, in, for both the leading order and the next leading order. So when you take the leading order cross section and you write you rewrite it in terms of its imbalance uh, variables or vector back variables, you get an expression like this, and then you can make your Q or P tilde expansion to realize uh, that the cross section is in fact isotropic to uh, Q squared over QS uh, squared. Uh, to get this expression, uh, you, you have to assume that Q is uh, uh, smaller than QS so that you can expand the dipole. Uh, also, uh, to get uh, an angular dependence, you need to go one order beyond. So you get a Q or Q tilde suppression. And then the cosine dependence uh, comes just from the hard factors. So essentially the message is that by using the leading order calculation, the uh, angular correlations will not, uh, will not be sensitive to, uh, uh, to, uh, to the saturation scale because they are not sensitive to the, to the dipole because all the dependence is, uh, is in the hard factor. So you need to somehow go beyond that. And roughly speaking, at the leading order, uh, in the saturation regime, the photon is uh, typically emitted uh, collinearly to the jet. So what we are interested in is uh, if you can get back-to-back uh, -back emissions that would be sensitive to the separation scale. And uh, uh, certainly at the next leading order, this is possible. And just roughly speaking, this is because you have a three-particle final state. So uh, here uh, we are focused on gamma jet events. And then you have to say what's a jet. And then so we, we decide that, so you, you can choose. So we decide that uh, uh, anti-quark is the jet and then the next point is that you have to isolate the photon from that uh, jet. So we, we, we say that the photon comes from the quark line. And, uh, uh, and then what we will do essentially is we want to integrate out uh, the, the quark that is emitting the photon. Uh, so notice that this is uh, completely the opposite of uh, what I was saying before. So as we had this long discussion, so if we if we take the analog diagram and then we integrate out the uh, quark that's not emitting the, uh, the photon, then we pick up the, the collinear singularity and then uh, we essentially recover the leading order uh, contribution. Uh, so in terms of back-to-back -back variables, we don't get any new physics information than what I just said before. So to get uh, something new, uh, you have to do the opposite. And, and that's, that's what we do. We integrate over the photon. Uh, sorry, for the part that, uh, that is emitting the photon. What about the process a muon quark goes a photon quark, where there's only one weak oil jet and a photon? You seem to be talking about two jets plus the photon. But, there, were, yeah. but, but if you're measuring the jet and the photon, there is a, a, a muon quark scattering, yeah. which gives a photon and a weak oil uh, muon. A brief oil quark. quark. Yeah, that would be the leading order contribution, right? But the, uh, your angular distribution, that leading order result, is a very interesting thing. You're not even going really to look at it? So I just explained here that the leading order contribution has this suppression factor and, uh, as, as a, as a, as a one, one thing. And the second thing is that, at least in terms of this back-to-back -back, uh, variable, <coughs> so when you introduce this capital Q and P tilde, uh, the angular coefficients that you get are not sensitive to the to this to the saturation situation. I I I let me ask a little bit better. What what region of the typical energies of jets are you talking about? Well the 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 photon and the jet themselves can be very uh, energetic they, they they can be a few tens of G V but the good, 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 okay. yeah. <laughs> so forget about this expansion in harmonics. Sure. Why not just look at the function of theta? So at leading, at leading which order, the, which, which theta? Which theta? Which theta? Which theta? Which So at leading order, in the sense is phi is, is pi. So any change that you get in this phi dependence is a measure of uh, Q hat. Yeah, but it's, it's not the same phi. Uh, sorry. It's, this phi is not the angle between the jet and the jet. Yeah. That's oh, the oh, oh. It's a different angle. Well, well why don't you use the angle between the jet and the jet? Yeah, that can, that can also that's, be. That's, that's I mean, that's the natural that's angle. And, and 
Look, your, your diet, uh, now that you're down that small enough uh, jet energy so that pseudocloth is not dominating this whole process, you have a possibility of measuring Q hat from the, this angular distribution. I, but why yeah, is so this? This has been done before. Who? Yeah. Who okay. did this? Uh, in this energy region? We did it for the dynamic. Yeah, but well, this is folk time, right? Well, and, and, so I think Jamal did that. Yeah. So what, 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 what did they extract from you have when you did that? No, there's no data. There's no data. So do you have data for this process? Uh, I think recently there there is some data for from from the others, <laughs> and, but I, I I have to recheck that. Data. As far as I know, that maybe, but only recently. And so also here, if I may add to the, to the next slide. I mean, the, no, sorry, one more. Well, I guess the idea was to basically go to this TMD limit, or to basically look how you get from this, you know, complicated expression for producing one photon and a QQ bar, how you go to the TMD limit when basically integrate over the phase space of the clock that emits the photon and you take a small transverse momentum imbalance that's his uh, this capital q that he introduced yeah. basically the imbalance of the photon and the recoiling jet okay and <coughs> so that was just to look at uh, <coughs> uh, and then you can basically reduce this to to tmds uh, the cross section, which I guess he's, he's going to show. Do you put an isolation here? Right, yeah, so basically yeah. you integrate over this quad that makes a photo and you. Down to the isolation. Yes, exactly. So what's the PT of the chip? The gamma? So he, he said in the order of 20 GeV or so. So it's a. And then the which of these can be high, but the imbalance should be small. Yeah, yes, but the. But the forming it, well, if, he, if, if, the, if, the, right? if the jets are really high, but you know, say above 30 GeV, Sudokov is going to wipe out everything, yeah, yeah. right? So I guess you're, it's, it's more interesting if you can get down into the 20 GeV region, 20 to 30, where Sudokov isn't so important, mm -hmm. and yet LHC has a chance of, of measuring. Right, right. So, so here it's, it's really good repeatedly, right? Well, it's so the kinetics is, 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 is just not in the saturation. Okay. No, but the point is the transverse momentum scale that enters the dual distribution is the imbalance, the Q curve. Yeah. Well, I get the it, I get it, but the, I think I would agree with Al, I mean, but, but still, I mean, the calculation is different from what you did there. It's not, it's not let's say, shock wave uh, limit. No, right? I don't know. No, I don't so, know. So, so the transverse momentum kick, where does it come from? It's from the target, right? Yes, and it's very small. It's very small, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. But the, to form the digest of the rapidity, right? So the, the momentum yeah. transfer is of the order of the PT. So the same question is, is, is the, the X tau sum is very small. That's what I think is worried about whether the X is small enough. No, no, I'm not saying that the, the, the transfer is small enough. The momentum transfer is small enough. The momentum transfer is small enough. So they are formed back to back. The yeah, 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 yeah. So the momentum transfer to form them is of the order of the PT of the jet. No. no. If you have 20 GB that way and 20 GB that way, right? the transfer of momentum is zero. Yeah. No, no, no. Try. But, but you, the balance, balance, you, you might see. expect the imbalance to be, uh, what, this is a, a heavy ion collision? Or this is a PA. Well, for a, a, okay, the PA is small. For a heavy ion, you might expect the imbalance to be 0.5 GB. Most of that's not too far away from the US. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. But, but that's a significant angle if it's only a 20 GB jet. The four, four over twenty. Oh, okay. That's a non that's a non angle, and you can measure it your you might measure it rather well, and that would tell you what your Q hat was. I disagree. No, I disagree. I mean you form with rapidity digest, right? The momentum transfer that forms the digest, right? Is of the order of the PT of the digest. So say you have PP, right? You have you have PP, right? Okay, you pick a coordinate of our trend the intrinsic transverse momentum of the from the gluon distribution is small. Even if the scale, now what you're what you're saying is the scale is large because of the PT of the jet. That's fine. But what they want to measure is the intrinsic transverse momentum from the target. Is 
feasible. Yeah, 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 the saturation yeah, yeah, I get it, but in kinematics, there is a two to two process, right? Yeah, which is a two to two process where the incoming guys are almost collinear, and the question is how close to collinear they are. And that this is what well, well, like, I mean is that it's going to be collinear in both sides, the, the proton side and from the nucleus side. That's what I'm saying. Close to collinear, but not exactly yeah. because of its mm -hmm. okay, okay. 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 Okay, so uh, anyway, now I uh, just briefly go into the details of uh, how we made this calculation. So we need to integrate over the phase space of the quark. And <coughs> uh, first we uh, assume that the uh, typical uh, momentum transfers from the uh, uh, gluon in the proton and the gluon in the nuclei are much smaller than the hard scales, uh, the, the photon and the, and the jet moment or, or this uh, p tilde. So then, then we can expand the amplitude and we can use the word identities to show that the amplitude is proportional to uh, both of these momenta. Then you square this. Uh, and by squaring it, uh, you can actually use this momenta to act uh, uh, by partial integration to act on the uh, gluon distribution in the nuclei. Uh, so that instead of uh, powers of momenta, you get derivatives. And this is now the, the this, this general correlator that we have in this process with derivatives, and then you take the Fourier transform. <clears throat> so in, the, in this way, you get these TMDs or, or TMD-like functions. Uh, in, in this case, it's F function and H function, which is perhaps unpolarized and linearly polarized gluons. And the precise relationship to the TMDs is uh, uh, elaborated in, in, in these papers. So now, now when you have that, uh, you still have to integrate over the phase space. Uh, so we integrate over the photon quark collinear singularity. Then you have this uh, z variable, which is a momentum fraction of the photon. Uh, that, uh, uh, sorry, that the, the ratio of the photon momenta uh, to the momenta of the parent quark. And we also introduce this abbreviation. And now, now I guess this is the, the crucial point. The total momenta of the final state, which enters the gluon distribution. So in the collinear approximation, it's written like this, and then you go to these new variables and then you get this expression here. And the point now is that we take this uh, uh, value of z uh, to be uh, almost one. So that most of them, uh, uh, so, so that the photon carries most of the momenta from, from its parent quark. That, that would be the isolation cut. So that the um, hadronic activity uh, around the photon is, is, is small. In, in, in some sense. So that means that 1 minus z is much, much less than 1. And then if you go to the uh, correlation limit where you can forget about uh, capital Q, then it, it says that the uh, total momenta of the final state is soft, even though this is a hard scale because you have this prefect. And that's, that's, that, that's how the, uh, the big one solutions will be sensitive to, the, uh, to, to, to some soft momenta of the order of the separation scale. This is now the full expression for the cross section after the integration over the uh, transverse part of the phase space. You in fact get uh, three of these uh, unpolarized uh, distributions and three of these polarized, uh, linearly polarized distributions. But in fact, uh, when when you do the calculation, it turns out that this particular combination uh, uh, of linearly polarized distribution vanishes, so you end up just with expressions that contain these f's. Uh, then. From that point on, you can uh, just do uh, a bit more of calculation to get these angular correlations, and you find that these angular correlations, in fact, scale is q over p tilde uh, to the nth power. And here we show the first two expressions for the angular correlations. So the most important thing uh, here is that now these angular correlations are dependent on the gluon distributions. And, uh, and, and also, the argument in the angular correlations is such that uh, we can prove uh, uh, semi-hard scales. So as, as I said before, you have this 1 over z prefactor that multiplies p tilde. So this is something that can be of the order of the uh, saturation scale, provided you use the isolation cut. So these are now the results uh, of a toy model calculation for the um, uh, for the angular harmonics. This is the first angular harmonic, and you can see that it rises with, uh, the, as a function of p tilde, and then it, it kind of le levels out. 
so if you increase the saturation scale, it can be even higher. <coughs> Uh, the flat line that you see here would be the result of a leading twist calculation. So you still get angular harmonics even at the leading twist, but it's just a flat line. So the point is that if you have some uh, saturation physics in, in your calculation, then, then you get some, some, some shape, some, some non-trivial function for the angular uh, correlations. And for the, the second harmonic, it's, it's similar. Uh, but uh, the overall scale is uh, smaller because you have this additional uh, Q over P tilde suppression. So yeah, basically that's uh, that's all, and these are my conclusions. I I, I agree with that. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like a comment. I mean, you're looking at photon production. Which is right? Photon production? Photon production. Okay. Okay. So yeah. the description must be symmetrical, right? Mm. Okay, let's be For PP. Yeah, yeah PPPA doesn't matter. Kinematics. Oh. Just for kinematics, right? There's an interest in KT in the region. Well, if I do, if I do, if I do P, I should be able to do P, right? If I do P, I should be able to do P. Yeah. Not, not P necessarily with the same framework. Well, you can go the you can go the P, 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 but it's a the description is P, so it's not symmetrical. But you can take a limit P P, so you can take a limit of description where it becomes symmetrical. So my point is not about having you know about the system size, right? It's about the mass. So you're looking at literal physics, right? I agree. This description would work perfectly if you look at Dijet in forward direction. Okay, so I would use this framework. But mid rapidity, if you're looking at the uh, Dijet. That leading order gamma going once on one side and the, the jet going the other side, right? So the momentum transfer that forms these guys is of the order of the PT of the jet. Then, of course, you can have multiple scattering, and that would be responsible for the balance. But the, sum, but the part, part of the imbalance is carried also by the particle you integrate out. So oh, yes. that, that also carries momentum. If, if your two jets are exactly that to that value of PT. <laughs> Total momentum, <coughs> uh, total transverse momentum will be very zero. Sure, but sure. And but the initial total transverse momentum <coughs> is zero. Yeah. Right, but how, so how is there a, a large transfer? Well, the transfer is the transfer that makes you know your collinear partons actually then scatter and go at mid rapidity. So this is a two to two process, and the transfer is exactly the PT that was talking about. No, 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 no. Two jets, balance the jets. The momentum transfers are smaller because there was the linear composition. I mean, Yasin is just saying you're looking at a center of mass of two to uh, two, two scatter at, let's say, 90 degrees. That is not just for exactly the same. What do you mean by momentum transfer? You, have, you have a PT zero before it's a huge transfer on the longitudinal. Yeah. In, in the transverse one. the transfer. In the transverse one. <coughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's very interesting. In the center of mass, you've got two particles coming along the z direction. They scatter and say they both go <coughs> along the x direction. Yeah. So you have a big transverse momentum to the x direction. Yeah. That's the moment. Yes, I think that you see the same thing. From where? From the longitudinal direction. <laughs> they scatter, they scatter, they scatter by one. They scatter and they go up to 90 degrees. Okay. So, so if you do the kinematics, we'll see that what, what changes is the longitudinal. Yeah, that's right. right. The longitudinal right. changes that goes into the transverse. Yeah, well, the individual transverse momentum of each object changes. The sum is still so zero, right? right. Yeah. Yes, yes, so, yes. okay, so we agree. Mm -hmm. But so if this is interactivity, then why are you using the hybrid form of this? Well, that's my question. It's not really the hybrid form is because it's KT factorized also on the yeah. projectile side. But the, the, the stuff on the projectile side is uh, smaller, it's more or bigger. I thought it was no, like small X, no, no, I'm just saying it's so small X evolution from both sides. Okay. Oh, my office is actually open. Okay, so ah. okay. Okay. I mean, in fact, there was no evolution. I mean, there was no evolution. 
angular amplitudes, there was no explicit evolution because it was just MD model as a sort of a coin model yeah. kind of thing. Uh, the principle is F and so on, you could, you know, that can be X dependent on the form of evolution. Oh, all right, everyone's happy then. Uh, let's wait for lunch and we have one more talk in the afternoon at 2 30. Right? Yes, it's a third, but we're going to be in the discussion. Okay. <coughs> yeah, well, we'll, we'll have a discussion when it's more. Okay. Yeah.